Let us understand how Hive Interpreter works within Zeppelin. Before getting into Hive Interpreter, let us have a quick understanding on Hive architecture. Hive is a data warehouse offering within the Hadoop ecosystem, which uses a meta store storage to store the meta information about the data. It can use any RDBMS. By default, it uses a database called Derby database. We can configure it to work with any other database like MySQL, Oracle or any RDBMS. The actual data would get stored within the data storage location like HDFS. So Hive, it just does the data warehouse offering by mixing the meta information available as a part of the meta store with the data that's going to provide me the analysis platform on structured data. Within Hive, there is another component called Thrift Server that's going to work in the port 10,000 by default. That's going to facilitate the JDBC client to connect with the Thrift Server and I can use any query that I want against the Hive. I already have the Cloudera platform. I have the Hive configured. So within Cloudera, I have the Hive services running. I already have the Metastore server and the Hive server that is running in the node 2 and I do have configured the Metastore server as a part of MySQL. So if I get into the Metastore, that is configured with a PostgreSQL database and the user ID password, it should be available internally. It's already configured. That's going to be the responsibility of the administrator to configure the Metastore. And it already have the Thrift server that's configured and that's going to run in the port 10,000. So if you connect with the Hive or Hadoop administrator, they're going to provide the Thrift server URL, user ID and password. I'll be creating a Hive interpreter with the following details. I'll provide the driver, URL, user and password. I'll be providing the Marvin artifacts as the Hive JDBC and the Hadoop common. These jar files are required to access the Hive driver. Otherwise, it's going to give error message Hive driver class not found exception. Let me go ahead and create an interpreter. I have the Zeppelin services running in the port 9090. I'm going to create a new interpreter within the interpreter menu. Say create. I'll name the interpreter name as Hive and the group I'll make it as JDBC. I'll be adding the values with the prefix Hive. I'll explain what this particular prefix is. I can give any prefix that I want. I'll mention the driver org.apache.hive.jdbc.hive driver. The Hive driver property is added. I'm going to add the Hive URL. The Hive server is running as a part of node 2 and the thrift services is available as a part of port 10,000. I will provide the details and I am adding hive.url property. Then I will provide the hive.user property, username as hive and hive.password, the value, I will provide the password. So all the properties which belongs to a single set, I can group them together with a prefix. So while binding this particular interpreter within the notebook, I can give this prefix which particular property needs to be used. Let me give an example where this can be used. Assume you are going to have two environments, one for test and the other for say QA environment. You can have the set of properties for the test environment and another set of properties for the QA. So whichever the one, the property that needs to be adapted, you can use that particular property or the prefix within the interpreter. And to make use of this particular class, I need to provide the Marvin artifacts. The Hive JDBC and Hadoop common is a must. Say save. So the interpreter is saved. Let me create a new notebook. Hi. Note. Demo. One. Let me make it as Hive as the default interpreter. I'm going to provide the commands. Let me check what are all the database available as a part of Hive. And many queries that is available as a part of the RDBMS should work with the Hive as well. We call that as a Hive query language. Let's show databases. We do have Hive as the default interpreter, but still it's not going to work. 
It's trying to connect to the port 5432. Let's find out what went wrong. If I get into the interpreter settings, let me search for Hive. It is getting into the default URL. If it doesn't mention the prefix, it's going to get into the default URL. So I'm going to mention the prefix. So two options are available. Directly I can make the default URL over here to the Hive or I can provide with the prefix. So intentionally I made the prefix so that we can understand the feature of the prefix as well. I want to bind the Hive interpreter and I want this to use the Hive prefix. So that was able to connect to the database and it is listing the database available as a part of the Hive. Already I have a database called MovieLens. I'm going to drop it. Drop database, movie lens, cascade. If any tables are available, it will not drop. So I forcefully to drop the tables. I need to provide the cascade option. I'm going to create a database, movie lens now. I'm going to use the sample data available as a part of the movie lens. So that can be downloaded from this specific location as a part of group lens org. Let me go ahead and execute a few queries. I'm going to use movie lens in all my query. I'm going to create a table called ratings. The ratings data, it has user ID, movie ID, ratings, timestamp. And uh, that is delimited with a hash value. One more important thing within Hive, Hive, it can accept only a single character as a delimiter. So let me go ahead and create this particular data on this table. I'm going to create another table called movies. That's going to have movie ID, title, Genere and again that is delimited with a hash and within Genere it's going to have array of values that is delimited with a pipe. Let me create the other table as well. So I have the data, users and occupation. The same data is made available within my HDFS location in this specific location. Let me go ahead and uh, check the uh, data available within the HDFS. This is the MovieLens dataset that I had downloaded and one disadvantage with the Hive, it doesn't accept two character delimiter. But MovieLens dataset, it is having a two character delimiter that is a double colon. I have done the pre-processing on the MovieLens dataset using the set command. I replaced all the double colon with a hash value and saved that as a, a different file. So all the delimiter is replaced with a hash value. Now I can use this specific data to add it into my Hive or load it as a part of my Hive database. What I have done, I have added the entire data into my HDFS. So all this would be done by the administrators. For the demo purpose, I am just going to demonstrate so that quick overview on how Hive works. So the same file is added into the HDFS in this specific location. I can use the HDFS command to see the content available within the HDFS. So I have a file movielens.t. I can check what all files are available within this specific folder. So I do have these files movies.t, ratings.t and users.t. I'm going to use this specific file to load it into my tables. So I'll populate the table. I'll be loading the ratings data. From this specific location, I'm going to load the ratings data. The same way, I'll be loading the other tables as well. Movies, users, and occupations. Occupations, it is available as a, a static file that already I have shared it as a part of this specific lecture. I'm loading the occupations table. So all the four tables should have got loaded. I can check what all tables are available. Show tables. I do have four tables, movies, occupation, ratings, and users. I'm going to use the query and uh, create some results. Let me create a data set based on this specific query. Let's not worry about the syntax of the query. Let's concentrate on the result. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the title, gender, age, occupation based on the ratings. And I'm going to do the join between the users and movies and that's going to create that as another table called ratings underscore full the table ratings underscore full should have got created let's describe what is available within this 
So it's going to have these columns. Any analysis on this particular data set, if I want, I can do. Let me go ahead and run another query where I'm going to get the occupation and number of users who have provided the rating as five. This is going to submit a job to the hive and get that executed. It's going to take significantly longer time because it's going to get submitted that as a job and get the result. This particular disadvantage can be suppressed or it can be overruled by using another component called Spark that's going to cache the data in memory and that's going to give 100 times more performance than Hive. So that is a different component within the Hadoop ecosystem called Apache Spark. We will discuss about that Spark interpreter as well down the line. I have got the result for each occupation, how many users provided the rating as five. I can visualize that as a bar graph as well for each of the occupation, how much they have provided. Now let me include one another factor. I am going to include the gender as well. So how the gender going to impact the ratings for five for each of the occupation. Got the result for each occupation for various gender. What is the rating which is provided as five? I can do the bar visualization. I need to change the settings. So what should go as a key? I want to go the occupation as a key and the count. And how I wanted to do the a grouping. I wanted to do the grouping based on the gender. And how I wanted, for example, for this particular K-12 student, female rating 1786. And for male rating, this is the rating. In case if I wanted that to be stacked, I can select the option to be stacked. So we have all the options to configure the settings for this particular graph. And if I want a different graph, I can do the different visualization of this particular graph as well. Each of the Hive query, it's going to submit a job to the Hadoop ecosystem and it's going to get the job done. It's going to take little longer time. And we will be learning about another component called Spark, which will help us to get the result much faster. We will see the demo for that particular option as well. So in a summary, we are able to create a Hive interpreter and bind that into a notebook and execute different queries and explore various options and the settings are available within the notebook graph option.